Hi, my name is Dr. Kobrasi and welcome to my lesson about naming alkenes according to UPAC rules. To name alkenes, we must follow all the rules for naming alkanes with the following modifications. Rule number one. First, we must number the longest chain in the direction that gives the first carbon of the double bond the smallest number. If we look at the green direction, we have six carbons. The double bond starts at carbon number five. Whereas in the red direction, the double bond starts at carbon number one. Therefore, the proper way of numbering is along the red direction because it gives the double bond carbon the smallest number. Rule two. To name the alkene, start with the prefix corresponding to the number of carbon atoms in the longest chain and end it in ENE. -E. In this case, the longest chain contains six carbon atoms, and this corresponds to the prefix hex. To indicate that this is an alkene, we add ENE -E to the end, and thus the longest chain is called hexene. However, the name is not yet complete. Here's a table that correlates the number of carbon atoms with the name of the alkene. Two carbons is ethene, which is better known as ethylene. Three carbons is propene. Four carbons is butene. Pentene for five. Hexene for six. Heptene for seven. Octene for eight. Nonine for nine. Decene for ten. And so on and so forth. Rule three. To complete the name of the alkene, the location of the double bond must be indicated by placing the locant of the first carbon in the double bond before the E and E ending. Thus, since the double bond starts at carbon number one, we must place number one before E and E, and the name becomes hex one en Rule four. If there is a substituent, the double bond takes precedence. The longest chain is numbered to give the double bond the lowest number, not the substituent. It doesn't matter what substituent we have or how many of them we have, we always look for the longest chain and number it in a direction that gives the double bond the smallest number. So if I look at this molecule, the green direction gives the double bond number 4 and the methyl substituent number 2. The red direction gives the double bond number 3, but the methyl substituent number 6. Therefore, the red direction is the correct direction for numbering, because it gives the double bond a smaller number, even though the methyl group became a very high number um, compared to the green direction. But again, we don't care about the substituents, we just want the double bond to have the smallest number possible. And this molecule is called 6 methyl hat 3 in rule 5 the longest chain must include the double bond even when a longer chain exists for example in this molecule if we follow the green direction we have 10 carbon atoms in a row the red direction has 8 carbon atoms including the double bond because the, uh, the red direction includes the double bond, it's the correct direction for numbering. And therefore, this molecule becomes 3-butyl-oct-1-ene. Rule 6. Double bonds and alkenes do, do not allow for free rotation. The two molecules shown above have the same connectivity and thus are not structural isomers. The connectivity for both is a methyl group followed by a CH, followed by a double bond, followed by a CH, followed by a CH3. However, it is clear from their structures that they are different molecules. I cannot redraw these structures by simply rotating around the double bond. In fact, they have very different properties. If I look at their melting points and boiling points, they are quite different, especially the, um, the melting point having 
more than 30 degrees difference. Well, if they were the same molecules, they should have the same physical properties, but they don't. These two molecules of butene are called stereoisomers. Even though they have the same conductivity, their orientation in space is different. Remember that the pi bond is made up of overlap between two parallel p orbitals that are orthogonal to the plane of the sp2 orbitals. Consider the plane of the pi bond. Think of this plane as splitting the double bond into two sides, side 1 and side 2. If the double bond is disubstituted and both substituents are on the same side, the stereoisomer is cis. If the double bond is disubstituted and the substituents are on opposite sides, the stereoisomer is trans. And therefore, this isomer of butene is called cis-butene, whereas this isomer is called trans-butene. Rule number seven. For stereoisomerism to occur, each carbon along the double bond must bear two groups that are different from one another. In the above molecule, each carbon bears two groups that are different from one another. One carbon has a methyl and a hydrogen. Methyl and hydrogen are different groups. The other carbon has also methyl and hydrogen, while methyl and hydrogen are different groups. Therefore, in this molecule, stereoisomerism exists. In this molecule, on the other hand, at least one carbon atom bears two groups that are the same. If I look at the left carbon, it has two hydrogen atoms, and both hydrogen atoms, well, they're both hydrogens, therefore they're the same group. Thus, this molecule cannot have stereoisomerism. Rule 8. In this molecule, each carbon of the double bond bears two groups that are different. Therefore, stereoisomerism does exist. The left carbon has a bromine and a chlorine, the right carbon has a chlorine and a hydrogen. Is this molecule cis or trans? Well, cis and trans terminology can only be used when we have disubstituted double bonds. So what do we use when we have trisubstituted bonds such as this one, or even tetrasubstituted uh, double bonds, and also for disubstituted double bonds if we want, we have to use the easy terminology. To determine if an alkene isomer is E or Z, we must ask ourselves three questions. 1. What substituents are attached to each carbon of the double bond? 2. Of the two substituents on each carbon of the double bond, which one has higher priority? And 3. Are the two highest priority substituents on the same side of the double bond or on opposite sides? Let's start with the first question. What substituents are attached to each carbon of the double bond? Well, the left carbon has a chlorine and a bromine. The right carbon has a chlorine and a hydrogen. Let's move to question two. Of the two substituents on each carbon of the double bond, which one has higher priority? Well, what is priority? Priority is based on atomic number. Higher atomic number, equal higher priority. For practical purposes, we can make the correlation that the heavier the atom, the higher the priority. On the left carbon, Br is heavier than Cl, therefore Br has higher priority. I'm going to put the letter A next to Br, just to remember that this is the group with the higher priority. On the right carbon, Cl is heavier than H, therefore Cl has higher priority. So I'm going to mark it with A as well. Okay, let's move to question 3 now. Are the two highest priority substituents on the same side of the double bond or on opposite sides? In the above isomer, both A's, or both high priority groups, 
are on the same side. That's the chemistry joke here. Because they are on the same side, therefore this isomer is Z. And the name becomes Z1-bromo-1,2-dichloroethene. If the highest priority groups were on opposite sides of the double bond, like above, the isomer would be the E isomer. And therefore, the above isomer would be named E1-bromo-1,2-dichloroethene. Rule 9. In this case, the substituents are groups of atoms and not single atoms like before. This is becoming to look more like a real molecule that you would encounter. In this case, we only compare the atom directly attached to the double bond to determine if the isomer is E or Z. Let's look at the left carbon of the double bond. It has an oxygen and a carbon attached to it. Oxygen is heavier than carbon and gets highest priority. I'm going to mark it with A. On the right side, we have a carbon and a hydrogen. Carbon is heavier than H and gets highest priority. Again, let's mark it with A. Since the highest priority groups are on the same side, the isomer is Z. And I would call it Z pent 2 en 3 all This is a pentenol. Okay, whether it exists or not is a different story. But anyway, we will learn how to name alcohols and enols in other videos. Rule number 10. In this case, the left carbon is bonded to two carbon atoms. If such a case arises, we move to the next heaviest atom directly attached to the first carbon until we find the first point of difference. The easiest way to make this determination is to assign the atoms directly bonded to this carbon atom. Okay, so the carbons that are circled in green are attached to the double bond. To determine their priority, I'm going to look at this at, at each of these carbon atoms and make a determination of what atoms, other than the double bond, are attached to them directly. Okay, let's see. This one that's circled in green right now, the methyl group basically, has three H atoms attached to it. We're going to open a bracket. I'm going to put HHH inside. This indicates that this carbon is coordinated to three hydrogens. Now let's go to the bottom one. The bottom one is bonded to two hydrogens and one carbon atom. So I'm going to place those in brackets as well in order of, of heaviest to lightest. So it's CHH. Okay. Next step, I'm going to compare the coordination of each until I find a first point of difference and we can see it directly the first um, comparison is the first point of difference carbon is heavier than H and therefore the bottom group has higher priority than the top group and we give it the letter A okay let's look on the right side of the double bond again same thing the carbon of the double bond is bonded to two carbon atoms Let's find their coordination. The top one is connected to two carbons and one hydrogen, so it's CCH, whereas the bottom one is CHH. All right, let's compare them. The first comparison, we get a carbon and a carbon, so it's the same. We move to the next one. Carbon and hydrogen. Carbon is heavier than hydrogen, therefore the top group has higher priority. Okay, now let's name it. Well, because, it's, uh, because the highest priority groups are on opposite sides, this is the E isomer. So the name is going to have E in it in the beginning. Find the longest chain containing the double bond. It's a, th uh, a six carbon chain. It has two methyl groups and one ethyl group. The name becomes E3-ethyl-2,4-dimethyl-hex. 3 in. Rule 11.
To determine the priority of multiply bonded groups, a double bond is counted as two bonds and a triple bond is counted as three bonds. Now remember, this is only for bookkeeping purposes and this has nothing to do with, uh, with reality. Again, these are just ways for us to name things, to, to stop ambiguity. So for example, since this carbon is triple bonded to another carbon, its coordination is considered to be CCC. Okay. Whereas this carbon has the coordination CCH. CCC versus CCH, well, CCC wins. And therefore, the, um, the top group, the triple bond, gets highest priority. If I look on the other side, I have a C double bond O. So that's two O's. And then a single bond carbon, so that's one C. So this carbon is connected to two O's and one C as far as determining priority is concerned. I arrange them OOC. Now let's, let's look at the bottom one. We have OOO. Okay, again, who wins in terms of priority? Well, the bottom group wins. Therefore, we have the highest priority groups on opposite sides of the double bond, and this is the E isomer. And I'm going to skip naming it for now. Remember, don't forget to number through the double bond. Okay, one of the rules of naming alkenes is to always number through the double bond. Okay, the way I have the uh, red direction here, the numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, it doesn't number through the double bond. Okay, so we gave the double bond number 1 and we gave the substituents number 1 and 2. And this is a common mistake that students make because they're eager to give the substituents the smallest number. However, however, this is incorrect because we numbered around the double bond, not through it. The more correct numbering would be this direction. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 going through the double bond. One methyl group gets number 1, the other one gets number 6. And the name of this molecule becomes 1,6-dimethylcyclohexene. Now the reason why we didn't indicate the location of the double bond is because it has the highest priority in this ring and therefore it's assumed to be always number one. And that's it. It's a long video I know. Alkenes are a bit complicated because of the stereochemistry but uh, with enough practice you should be able to do it very well. Thank you for listening and please pass the word.